what is up you guys delicious here coming at you with an all new dauntless video but first if you enjoy quality gaming content or informational videos like the one i'm posting today then consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my future videos that being said as you guys just saw from the intro the thunderdeep drask is officially upon us it's now arriving in the shattered isles on cape fury with patch 1.7.1 it's going to drop first thing tomorrow at reset there's a lot of other things that are coming with the update, um, like some big bug fixes to certain behemoths that have been around for a while, as well as some UI and rumor slash quest updates. So let's jump right into all the juicy details here. So right out the gate, obviously we have the Thunderdeep Drask, a long lost foe. This by the way, was back from the alpha and beta times of Dauntless. They're finally revamping it and bringing him back. Uh, Bo has returned to the Shattered Isles, face the improved Thunderdeep Drask, and craft armor and weapons from the Deep Scale Shards. Personally, I don't have access to the test servers. I'm not cool enough to be a partner yet, uh, so I'm not going to be able to show you what the look of, of this armor and weapons are, but trust me when I say they are pretty badass. And uh, for the most part, the perk summary actually looked halfway decent on them. But until the next patch, 1.7.2, this behemoth can only be found in the Slumbering Thunder event on Cape Fury in the hunting grounds. So as we'll read in a minute, all of the public events on the Cape Fury hunting grounds are gonna be temporarily disabled for the time being in favor of this Thunderdeep Drask event. So that is where you're gonna to wanna to go in Cape Fury to fight the new Thunder Drask once you complete the quest. Uh, be careful Slayer, Thunderdeep Drask has some new tricks up his sleeves. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And I just think he looks badass in my opinion. One of the coolest game designs I've seen yet. Uh, moving on, we have Umbral and Terra Escalation being added to the Heroic Escalation rotation. Uh, the Umbral Escalation will be at reset tomorrow from July 22nd to July 29th, and Terra will be the following week from July 29th to August 5th. We're also getting some new quests. Slay the Thunderdeep Drask and turn it into a new armor set, into a uh, new armor set in two new quests. This quest chain can begin with Dr. Shayed Priyani in 1.7.0 and continues with Zayla the Far Slayer and Moira Hidesgitter in 1.7.1. Start the quest chain by talking to Priyani and taking on the Shocking Development quest. That is the quest that we already have access to. You can do that right now before this patch tomorrow and kind of get a head start. If you've already completed that quest, then you'll move right on to Zayla for the next part of the assignment to do the second part of the quest. Um, so yeah, get that done now, get it out of the way, and you'll have a head start for tomorrow's update. Uh, we also get two new rumors. Unlock the Scintilla die, which is an old die that was removed, but to bring it back, as well as the Field Rig Battle Plate through two new rumors. These rumors unlock after collecting their corresponding rumor clues from Thunderdeep Drask and Cape Fury. Uh, I believe one of them is from slicing the tail off of Thunderdeep Drask while it's enraged. I'm assuming the other one will just be maybe breaking the head or while it's Aether Charge, something like that. Um, so it's usually in an enraged state is the, the trigger for those. Uh, but you get them both from Thunderdeep Drafts, is the, the clues for the rumors. Moving on to balance updates for the hunting grounds themselves. Aether Surge, High Alert, and Shards of Chaos events will be temporarily disabled on Cape Fury. They will return in 1.7.2 once slayers have come, the storm caused by Thunderdeep Drask. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, for Escalation, the Heroic Escalation Weekly Rewards have gained a bit of a buff, actually. Uh, to 100 combat and exploration merits and 20,000 rams before it was 50 and I believe 5,000 rams. So big update for the reward. Boreas also will no longer appear in heroic escalations while we address the points of friction. A lot of people are hating the fight with Boreas because his armor just never breaks and the rotation's still off with his minions. So on heroic versions, it's really annoying. Uh, the other annoying thing is Thrill of the Hunt amp is also getting a major debuff. Uh, it's being reduced for to 2, 3, 4, and 5% damage overall per Behemoth Slain from 2.5 up to 10% from what it was originally. So Thrill the Hunt, actually not that good of a perk to grab anymore. Maybe if you get it round one, it's still an okay perk if you don't have other good ones to pick. But in the long run, there's other amps that are just as good, if not better now, than Thrill the Hunt with that uh, um, update and made it a lot worse, and I'm not sure why they did it. Uh, for Drask, the Shadow Touch Drask head no longer causes damage during his gravity dunk move. Drask's build up rage throughout the encounter and tail breaks will increase the chance that rage occurs. They added a new combat entrance for the Shadow Touch Drask. It's uh, basically an umbral version of the Thunderdeep Drask entrance now. And they lastly added an audio cue, the beginning of Drask's lightning breath attack. 
For Skarn, the uh, interrupt window during its bulldozer move is now during the charging animation instead of the start of the animation. For quality of life, uh, individual dies are now available for purchase for 100 platinum. So that's cool. For UI, they added a new icon for the parasitic debuff and added more information to the UI to explain how these seasonal coins work and when they rotate. For audio cues, the Thunder will now play more up-close variations as you get closer to the Shocknado on Cape Fury and Distance Ones when you are further away, and added polish to various draft sound effects such as the footsteps and tail swipes. Moving on to gameplay bug fixes, now there's a few really big ones, especially for the uh, Chrono Slayer Pass that they did fix. Uh, they fixed a bug where actions that would spend stamina to reduce the chilled status effect were not working when Cascade's buff was active. Fixed a bug where the Grace perk would override existing attack speed buffs after sprinting. This was huge. Grace was pretty much broken before. You'd lose your stacks just by like stopping and running again. Uh, now they continue on throughout the whole duration uh, for 40 seconds, I believe, which is really nice and will probably be a mandatory perk to have when the Wind Fury, Wind Fury Omni Cell drops. Um, they also fixed a bug where the player's model would turn invisible during an attack. Lastly, fixed a bug where players would go down immediately after being revived. I ran into this a couple times on fighting the Chronovore. For escalations, they fixed a bug where players could fall endlessly through the escalation. They say they fix this every patch, but uh, some way we find a new way to do it every single time. So we'll see how long this one lasts. For cosmetics, they addressed major cloth physics issues for the most recent on pass and reward cash armor skins. Thank God that little single flap cape thing would just go all over the place so hopefully that's a little bit better now the climbing grips armor skin no longer makes players fingers invisible moving on to quests this is a big one fixed a bug where the time we vembraces part two rumor is not tracking the objective where you deal 500k core damage to the chronovore while using the time we've gauntlets uh people were equipping it and it just wasn't counting so that should be updated after this patch Heroic Escalations now properly count towards challenges that ask you to complete escalations for that particular element. So that's good. Moving on to Behemoth specific, Nezaga, they improve the hitboxes so they are more accurate when taking wound and part damage. Riftstalker uh, fixed a bug where players would transition into the Riftstalker's murder palace, wasn't smooth, so it should be a little bit more uh, readable. Resicuri, they fixed a bug that caused Resicuri to shoot lasers even after it was slain. For Skarn, they fixed a bug where Deep Frost Skarn would stay underground for far too long. Stormclaw, they fixed a bug where Shock Orbs would go right through Stormclaw if they're reflected within a short distance. Now they should properly stun him uh, and connect how they should. Uh, Embermane, the Deep Frost Embermane now has the correct rage visual effect. For Chronovore, they fixed a bug where the behemoth uh, that is consumed by Chronovore's entrance animation would float above the ground while on burrowing. For Agris and Thrax, they improved performance during moves with lots of visual effects, so we don't have to worry about crashes in certain systems, things like that. Should be a little bit uh, less frame heavy. For UI, uh, they removed the Iceborne cell completely from the game. For those of you that don't know, there was actually a bug where you could still get them uh, from the middleman if you crafted the cells manually, so that has apparently been fixed. The Paradox Breaks now display the proper level recommendations, which is 16 to 19. Fixed a bug where the Trials End of Hunt screen wasn't displaying the times a bug where the bounties available widget was active even though all four bounties were active so hopefully we won't get those yellow dots all over the place constantly being in the personality menu when the airship countdown ends no longer breaks the camera fixed a bug where players couldn't claim the final reward from the chrono slayers event pass this was actually a big bug that i personally did i finished that thing weeks ago uh even before this uh update and uh i never got the transmog for it so hopefully when this patch drops, we'll either just have it or we'll have the ability to claim it again if we got bugged. That's really good. They fixed a bug that significantly slowed results from the progression service. This caused slowdown when drafting bounties, completing bounties, and turning in quests. Sometimes if you click them too quick and things like that, uh, the bounty would kind of do the animation that you claimed it, but it'd still be there and you have to click it a second time. So hopefully that's a little more uh, smooth. Remove last season's gallable icon from the level up and unclaimed reward summary screen. Uh, the Hunting Grounds nodes in the Slayer's Path now show the correct behemoths. Omnicell descriptions now properly fit in the tooltip window. They fixed typos in Kosha's journal entry. The Hinterwings glider in the store now has the uh, name in the inventory. They removed Shrike from appearing in the possible behemoth list for the Snowblind Waste in the Hunting Grounds. 
fix the bug where we where the reward cache was showing the hidden blades armor set that should be gone now uh weapons no longer display the wrong element icons and lastly fixed a bug where the vista images in the journal were blurry moving on to cape fury specific i'm assuming they fixed these and revamped them because they knew the thunder deep drask event was going to be held there and a lot of players were going to be there uh fixed unintentional lines in the environment and instances of rocks or flowers floating above the ground changed grass coverage to better accommodate aoe rings and smooth blending between sands and rocks they addressed trees that bent strangely when affected by wind and lastly fixed spots where players could fall through the map so that's good and last but not least for miscellaneous fixed a bug where repeaters aether strikers and chain blades would stay attached to players hands for certain animations when they shouldn't have fixed a bug where the potion visual effects would not be removed if the player consumed animation was interrupted fixed various bugs where equipment would not attach correctly to the body style 2 in the inventory's menu preview and last but not least fixed a bug where players could get stuck behind Zayla's treehouse so ton of updates this time around we got some revamps to cape fury uh i'm glad that they're doing some big improvements to old bugs for behemoth specific bugs that have been around for a while so it looks like they touched on a bunch of those hopefully they continue to do that um these quest ones were huge a lot of people were getting locked up and mentioning in my comments and on the discord why this isn't working uh, so that's going to be updated but obviously at the end of the day the biggest thing is the thunder deep draft and in my opinion it's one of the coolest looking behemoth variation skins that they've done and uh i'm really excited to jump in there tomorrow and see what it brings to the table so if you guys found this video informative be sure to smash that like button comment down below i appreciate your guys' feedback and as always if you're not already a member of the glitch gang be sure to click those links down in the description and join us we got hundreds of slayers in there always look for new people to hunt with myself included i help out people all the time in there as well as all the other people on the channels so hopefully we see you around but uh, that being said i hope you guys had a great day and we'll catch you in the next one take care Thanks so much for watching you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you're looking to join a killer community of like-minded gamers, then be sure to click the link in the description and join the Glitch Gang Discord server. We continue to grow every day and it's filled with all your favorite game discussion channels as well as several LFG channels to help you find that perfect group for your next hunt or raid. Lastly, if you're new to the channel and want to keep up to date with all my future content, then consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Hope you all had a great day and I will catch you on the next one.